Hey guys, Cam back here in the Battler Workshop and welcome. Well, we're not actually in the workshop today, we're in my very, very messy office. Um, today I'm going to jump on the shoulders of another YouTuber and that's Rob over at Dudley Toolwright. And uh, Rob does tool reviews. Um, he actually purchases a tool and he strips it down. He looks at the quality of the components. Um, he looks at the fit for purpose of the tool itself and the quality of the build. And uh, I certainly get a lot out of those tool reviews that Rob does do. And uh, a little while ago, he did a review on a pneumatic chamfering tool. And uh, I've actually purchased one of those based on Rob's recommendations. Thanks, Rob. Um, and I've made an adaption to this. I've put a bigger table on here. Um, I've also got a 3-2 foot valve that I've got mounted. So I've actually cable tied the, uh, the uh, handle shut and operate the foot mount. So I can actually use both hands to control doing the chamfering. And it's worked out really, really well. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is that um, I've had some big orders come through for my survey instruments and uh, COVID finishing up a lot of the survey companies are now re-employing and having to get instruments out to the uh, surveyors. So uh, I do the um, spheres, prison ball spheres, I do the L brackets and I do the control buttons. And I've actually got another suite of tools that uh, I've done design work for and that's been accepted so we're going to run some uh, some trials on those as well. So I'll, I'll mock up some samples and we'll see how they perform out in the field. I've actually shown these before in a previous video, but uh, these are the uh, survey spheres that I do. Um, I'll show you very accurately work on a tolerance of, uh, of 10 micron. And they're pretty chocker block inside here. I've actually got a, an XYZ setting block inside here that sets that uh, prism absolutely perfectly. As I said, I work on a tolerance of 10 micron, but uh, these are a lot better than that. To work with those prism balls, those spheres, I've got a series of brackets that I uh, that I manufacture. This is the uh, the L bracket. I'm just in the middle of doing the uh, the epoxying at the moment, just to give them a smooth face. And I also do these little control buttons as well. So once again, all of these are worked in a tolerance of uh, 10 micron. Uh, these L brackets are, are ground all over and lapped on the two control faces. So uh, extremely accurate, but a lot of work doing those. Now, what I like to do with these particular brackets is I like to put a, a machine chamfer or an arras all the way around. And it just finishes the job off nicely. Now I'd normally do that in the milling machine and it was very laborious doing six sides to try and keep the consistent. And uh, it would take me a long, long time to do these. And uh, as I said, Rob did the little review on this chamfering tool and I thought oh, I can use that. And uh, I have been using it for doing the chamfering on these tools, on these, uh, these brackets. And it is an absolute time saver and extremely consistent. So what might take me 15, 20 minutes to do on the mill, I can do about a minute on this unit here. So as I said, I've done some uh, modifications to it. You can see the bigger table on there. And uh, as I said, I've got a 3-2 valve foot valve that I operate it with so I can do it hands free. Uh, I've made up a very, very rudimentary clamp that clamps around that and uh, I can set that in the vise and once again I can use both hands to control the chamfering. I've actually uh, coated up the shape of this um, on the outside drawn and coated it so I, I will at some stage do a uh, specific CNC um, cut for that so that it fits up perfectly. But this works very, very well just to prove the concept. All right, so I have been very, very busy in the shop. Um, I haven't had much of a hiatus. It's uh, It's been very consistent for this. And as well as that, I'm also um, building my foundry shed at the back of my workshop here as well. So we might go out and have a quick look at where that's at. Um, I was going to bulldoze the three brick walls that I had remaining um, when I gutted out the old shed that was there to put this shed up. But um, I've looked at the cost for putting a new slab down and a whole new building up and uh, I've decided that I'm going to keep those three walls in play and work with those. Uh, unfortunately the shed has got quite a line, it's dropped around about 60 millimetres at the back, same as what the shed did. Um, and uh, the idea is that I'll, I'll straighten everything up, hide the brickwork with the live board so that you can't actually see that it is leaning over quite a bit and the way that I've done the roofing as well. Um, I've, uh, I've used timbers up there to actually taper down to actually take that, uh, that fall out as well. So it all, it all comes up at the end of the day, all nice and straight. But we'll take you out and show you where that's at. But in the meantime, let's go out to the uh, other workshop where I've got the uh, 
the uh, compressor all set up and we'll show you how these work. Alright, we'll see you in a tick. Alright, so you can see the uh, pneumatic chamfering tool set up in those blocks in my vise. And if we go into the bottom here, we've got our 3 2 foot valve. So we'll run you through one, I'll set the camera up on the uh, on the tripod and we'll show you how they work out. So with these I put some masking tape over them just to protect the ground, ground faces because they will be being rubbed across and uh, I've actually got the, the small magnets that I use to hold these in place uh, when they're out being uh, used as, with the survey instruments. Um, they tend to pull it down nice and hard onto the uh, onto the platen as well. Alright, I'll get my uh, earmuffs on and we'll give it a go. And that's it done. Beautiful little arrows all the way around that, nice and consistent. So you can see it takes less than a minute to do that. So very, very happy with that. All right, we've just got one more to do, so I might as well finish this one out and we'll show it to you. Right, so that's it with the masking tape peeled off and you can see that is a beautiful finish very very consistent bevel all the way around all right I'm going to finish off epoxying these out um, if I do the whole lot with the holes that are in here uh, they tend to suck in and I don't get the surface finish I want or shape that I want so uh, I do it in two stages so we'll finish those epoxies off this afternoon all right let's go out and have a look at where we're at with the foundry shed and we'll give you a quick look at that as well. All right, we'll see how we go with the wind, whether we get blown out. But uh, yeah, you can see uh, I've got the uh, two trusses up. Posts are in place. You can see the timbers that I've shaped and angled down to accommodate for that uh, fall that we've got. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be putting blue board up on those brick on the brickwork there, so you won't see it. I've actually got in with a grinder and I've cut down nice and straight to get that nice and level, both uh, the front door and the back door. And it's just going to have roller doors on the top. So we've got the purlins to go on next, fascias to go up, and then the roofing to go on. Inside here, I'm not going to pour a slab. I'm going to level that up with um, recycled concrete, pack that down. I'm going to put um, 500 by 500 mil square cement blocks down uh, all over the uh, all over the floor. 
rather than putting a, a concrete slab down. But as I said, I was going to knock the, uh, the three walls down and then uh, pour another slab and put up a specific building here. But let's uh, look at the costing and what I'm going to use it for. It just wasn't, uh, just didn't add up. So uh, this would be a fairly cheap option to get this done. But it's coming along really nicely. And uh, we'll see how that goes as we go along. Okay, so that's a bit of a rundown on what's been happening in the shop. It's been very, very, very busy and I also work full time as well. So putting some long hours into the workshop here, getting those um, survey instruments out and then in between time, trying to move the foundry shed along at the same time as well and get that up and get back into uh, back into some casting. So uh, it has been a, a long time between drinks since I put a video out. I think the last one I put out was for my 5,000 subscriber um, giveaway. So uh, it has been a while. Um, Anyway, thanks for looking in and uh, keep an eye on what's happening because there is some more stuff coming out. I do have a, a video plan for that um, little um, chamfering tool, the uh, the platen or the plate that I made up for that and some of the mods that I did on that. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. Alright guys, we'll see you soon. Yeah.